I apologize for my lack of enthusiasm. It is late, and I have not had dinner yet. But we are going to get through this for you, the viewer. Holy shit, this is like a 20-minute long episode. <laughs> we got one more boss fight, and luckily enough, it's one of my favorite ones, so... At least there's that. We got, you know, the coolest goddamn stage of boss and everything. And honestly, that still looks pretty rad to me, even in Game Boy mode, so... Ooh, yeah. Looks good. Almost at 100%. Just got one more sub tank and obviously the heart tank in this stage. Still only one build sub tank. Yeah, extreme doesn't fuck around really. I also don't know 100% what activated that just then. I don't know if sprite I sprite flicker. Ah. Man, so I... you can't see all the peril that's happening here, maybe, but it is present. I really can't wait till we start recording in 60 FPS. Yeah, so all of the... Uh, actually, this stage remains pretty much unchanged. The one obvious difference being there isn't uh, a chop register fight, because I literally don't think there'd be any way of doing that. So we get two radar killers. It's, er... Three radar? Now I'm second-guessing. Maybe? Two. Yeah, I know, but there's two in the original one, too. Oh, that's right. So there's two in this. <laughs> I'm tired and need food! <laughs> But yeah, it means food badly. The stage is more or less unchanged. You can uh, climb up there for some reason, which is really strange to me. I don't understand why they did that, since usually there's a ceiling, but whatever. Um, but the power-ups should be in the exact same location. I don't think they inverted them. And the mini-boss has changed because of system limitations. Is there always a capsule in this stage? No. The the I guess that's true. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's up. Okay, yeah, Jesus. So the whole um, the whole radar room is very different because it has walls to climb up to get to that capsule. So this is basically the Spark Mandrel stage of um, um, set two or half two or whatever. Oh, okay, good. Try. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how they had the. Secret roof one. And it's another secret roof one, too. So it's like, alright, I guess you just didn't have any other ideas. But yeah, whatever, at least you're trying. I do like how much content is in this for a Game Boy game. Like, it really does get like a good shelf life, especially when you're like still kind of new and bad at it and need to practice more. Yeah. Like, I put a lot of hours into this when I had it originally. So it's definitely good, especially if you're newer to the series in general, because it really does play just like the Super Nintendo one for the most part. With <laughs> you know, obvious limitations to it, but what they could do, they did do, and I think that's impressive, yeah. especially considering some of the earlier ones. Was there a better weapon you could be using against Radar Killer? Uh, in this instance, I'm really not sure, but Storm Tornado seemed to work pretty well. So yeah, this room uh, has the falling blocks. I don't think they form anything, though. I think they just explode. But yeah, so I'm gonna go up here. And I'm still gonna get chased down by the radar optic thing, whatever you want to call it. The, uh, it does work the same way. So we got final. Yeah. Got everything. One hundred percent. Basically, well, not Special until I get this. Special A-level hunter zero. And bosom buddy, best soldier friend chum. Bosom soldier chum, buddy friend. Pen pal. Yeah. So this one basically just. God damn it. This one just does dash and rising in a row, so it's like dash through and then come back around, which is neat, but like, couldn't think of anything. I would have honestly loved if one of them, he just came in and gave you a sub <laughs> Just, here you go, friend! No. Everything is like, look at how cool Zero's attacks are. Oh man, did one damage to a boss. Whoa! Also, I like that every one of the blueprints in the background, instead of being, like, a whole X diagram, is just a foot. <laughs> Four times in a row. Look, what's our pink shame, all right? Sure. So, Radar Killer works the same way in this as he does in X2. So, the more times you get scanned, the more powerful he gets. I think he ra maintains the same moveset, and I know it'll still only scan you three times for level four, basically. I think he scanned me twice? Once. Was it just once? Yes. So we're at special blue level 2 radar killer. Ah, oh, level 2 blue. I get it. I don't follow. 2 and blue are similar words. 
Yeah, in this instance I am using Speed Burner again, which I guess actually does carry over his weakness from uh, X2. Either that or it was about the same, and I just wasn't paying attention. That is also a very real possibility. Either way, both weapons are effective enough that you can use either. Or the Buster and get five flying. Honestly, just like X2, uh, you don't really need to worry about doing weakness damage to him unless he's at like a full level 4 for him, because mm -hmm. otherwise he's really not that challenging. But why not use the special weapon? Like, there's no reason not to. Now, does Centipede retain all his bullshit? Um, I am actually not sure. I think he does. Okay, so I'm going to use, I think, Dash and Den Final on him. So that did one brick. Don't do it. Did he just teleport? Uh -huh. sure. Okay, now he teleported. And now I'm gonna use no, rising on him? Okay. Damn it, Pass me make this easier. To do final once he gets on the ground. Um, yeah. There we go. Well. There we go. Why are my come on me! You're making sure he's not about to jump away. I think I might have also just been hitting the wrong buttons. So there's that. And that actually does a good amount of damage to him. But, like, I don't know why it's the only one. I don't know why you would give Dash and Rising, have them both be worthless and, like, use no energy. Like, because literally weren't, like, just one brick of damage. I could at least understand if it was, like, Hadoken level of damage, like, more shots or something, but, like, holy shit. Here's just the one that you can use on bosses, so. There you go. I guess if you're in a pinch, pro tip, you can use final, just make sure that you let him dash forward. And I think it's just the first thing he makes contact with, he'll swing at and then do rising with, so it's less of dash. Because dash will just kind of like have a crescent in front of him and just take out whatever's in a straight line. Well, take out. Um, That's gonna pretty much do it for the gameplay. Oh, good lord. Alright, so, yeah. Coming up is basically just, you got magnet mine. And then, uh... Cutscene for the entire rest of the thing, because I am merciful. In, like, the most roundabout way, yes. Hey, Pillow King. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's just so excited to see you. X! <laughs> you finally cleared out all the protections. I guess that's one way to word it. I guess they're firewalls. That'd be neat. Ah, oh, see, now I want to fight the firewall in... Alright, I'm gonna go to the door. He's so fatherly. It's just and like kind and gentle. And I, I love him. I hope you do a good job, son. <laughs> the dad I've never had. Well, I mean, X did no light, kind of in uh, yeah. in the one retcon thing. So I don't know how that falls in. Pretty sure he met. X has two daddies. <laughs> Alright, so we're going back to Clowno Zone, but, um, you know, it's not actually the whole thing. How did you cut this exactly? What am I... You'll doing? see. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> it's not that there's no gameplay, it's that it's, oh my god, basically a slideshow. That might just be my computer chugging, don't worry about I it. I hope it's just your computer chugging, because otherwise this is embarrassing. Alright, so, we've got the first fight here, which, uh, hopefully you left in. I did. Okay, good. I left in the... The new, the, the new stuff. So not a lot, but all right. So we've got our final confrontation with Gimbal, who I used to make fun of his design. It's honestly kind of grown on me. I think the one thing I would change is I would give him the spear that the other guy uses. You seem to be having problems. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Another problem. I'm gonna hassle you, X. No, please, Z. Just like pushes him. <laughs> Give me your lunch money, Stop girl. calling him Zemel. <laughs> yeah, so Speedburner is still the most effective thing against him, and he starts off more or less the same. I think he does a high throw and a low throw now. You should just be able to jump over both of them. Soon as he gets to half health, he's gonna do something new, though. There it is. So he's got one of those, like, old-school lore ninja kite things, except it has an actual visible fan on the back of it, which is just outstanding. And now when you hit him off of it, he actually lights on fire, which for some reason he doesn't do the first couple times you hit him with the fire weapon that he's weak to. And then, when you kill him, he's just on there, fine, kind of looks like he's going to throw a hand grenade at you, and then says, how frustrating, and dies. Yeah. 
pro tip, fire is frustrating. Don't that's, get set on it. That's how most trolls react to being set on fire. It makes the most sense. All right, so now we're back to uh, top speed here. Which... Right about no. now. Woo! That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so all unchanged. Look at my masterful gameplay Yay. of like weapon switching. God, like... As soon as you said, why not just hit select to switch weapons, I was like, motherfucker, just... <laughs> I can only imagine how good this would be with that, or with that. I don't know, do I die here? I yes. die here. All right, well, at least it's quick. You die here because... Oh, yeah, I actually died out. intentionally. That's yeah. what's And then you uppercut him with zero, and then you use zero against the wall. It was great. I use zero against the wall? Yeah, you accidentally triggered zero with the start button. With the... Oh, good. 